if you like wide open spaces that don't come wider or opener than you were playing. spectacle of thousands of migrating wild animals is a really raw and visceral sight that kind of gets you there and it's a sight that Africa is justifiably famous for. Many tourists every year go to the Mara Serengeti in Kenya Tanzania to watch the migrating wildebeest across the Mara River and it is an incredible spectacle but if you do go there at that time, you're going to be sharing that spectacle with hundreds, if not thousands, of other tourists. If, like me, you prefer to see your migrating wildebeest in a little bit of peace and quiet, then you need to come here. This is Liwa Plains National Park in western Zambia, home to the second largest wildebeest migration in Africa, and you will not find a single other tourist here. How's it guys? My name is Gus the African Plant Hunter. I am a uh, plant ecologist. I spend my life traveling across Africa investigating and researching indigenous plants. In the course of my travels I often come across little undiscovered gems and when I do I like to share them with everyone else through my video series called Into the Wild Africa or Into the Wild Zimbabwe. This is the first episode I've ever made in Zambia, so let's call it Into the Wild Zambia, and it's about Lua Plains National Park. This park only exists because of a very far-sighted royal proclamation from King Lewanika I, the Lozi King of Barotiland in the late 1800s, who saw that this was a unique and unusual area and it needed to be protected and he proclaimed it a protected wildlife area. He allowed certain villages to continue to live in the area and to uh, follow certain traditional uh, rules governing use of wildlife, fishing, etc. Um, but with the main emphasis on protection and so well was the area protected that it was only in the 1970s that the government of Zambia saw fit to proclaim it a national park. And recently it has come under the joint management of the Royal Barati Establishment, the Zambian National Parks Authority and African Parks. And it is a very well managed, extremely remote and isolated park and well, well worth the effort if you can get to visit it. So it's about three and a half thousand square kilometers. It's a huge flat area, hence the name Liwa Plains, at about a thousand meters above sea level, nestled on the eastern side between uh, the Zambezi River and on the western side, the Angolan border. It is seasonally flooded uh, during the rainy season from January to June. It's completely inaccessible and in fact the park is closed. Uh, by, by July the waters have subsided and it dries up. Uh, and the wildlife moves out at the first sign of rain in November the wildlife herds start to come back in late November early December which is exactly the time of year which I'm sitting here is the perfect time to see thousands even tens of thousands of wildebeest and zebra moving into the park from the north where they've been feeding during the dry season so you never really get to see the spectacle of all those wildebeest crossing the river like you do in the Mara uh, but you just realize as you go out and spend time in these plains that you're seeing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of wildebeest and at the end of the day you've probably seen four or five thousand of them which is not something you can do in many other places anywhere in the world. It's not just wildebeest and zebra you're going to see here you'll also see some more unusual antelope. Uh, we've seen a lot of oribi here, red lechery. Uh, there are eland, there are buffalo, in terms of predators, there's one sizable pride of lion who have pretty much the whole park to themselves. But actually the apex predator is the hyena and there are some very large packs of hyenas, up to 50 strong. We've seen them in the daytime and we've heard them 
uh, throughout the night calling and it's a remarkable wonderful sight it's not just the wild animals that you come here for it's also a birders paradise all this water brings migratory birds coming down from the north coming up from the south stopping off in the water here uh, some of these pans last throughout the year but at the flooding time right now at the beginning of the rains lots of birds come in i've seen bigger populations here of crown crane than i've ever seen anywhere in the world uh, you also see a lot of the wattle crane, which is very endangered, and I haven't actually seen them anywhere else at all. Really spectacular. Lots of other smaller birds. Uh, beautiful. It's also paradise for wild flowers. At this time of year, just as the rains start, the, the, the felt is just covered in these flowers. Different colors, yellows, purples, blues. It's spectacular. Lots of lilies, sand lilies uh, coming up and... I'm surrounded now by, actually these are trees that are underground trees. So this is a Paranari species, you know, Paranari curatelifolia is the, what we call in Zimbabwe, the Hacha tree, or Chakata, a beautiful big fruit tree. This is related to that, it's another Paranari species, but it lives mostly underground as an adaptation to the quite harsh environment here. And below ground there's lots of woody biomass and then the roots are deep, deep, deep down. What you're seeing here is just the tops of the leaves coming out above the surface of the soil. In terms of accommodation, there are several campsites here uh, around the park. They're all run by the local communities, uh, really nicely set out in these kind of tree islands. So in the south and east of the park, there are some areas of woodland, mostly dominated by the bokeh, the wild syringa. Uh, and then to the north and west, it's these wide open plains. So within Liua, there are, in terms of accommodation facilities, a couple of options. There's some high-end lodges, which I can't uh, share any information about because I haven't seen any of them. And there are these community campsites. There are several of them. They're all run by the local community, uh, beautifully situated in these uh, forested islands within the plains each of the sites um, dotted around the park have uh, a number of individual campsites around four or five discreetly located away from each other so uh, you've got privacy they're all beautifully shaded and they have basic very basic facilities i'll show you the toilets and showers and just lovely shade like this and really absolutely all that you need this is the ablutions block with which each camp is equipped a treadle pump that feeds up uh, from this well here that feeds up into a tank and from the tank down into shower and a flush toilet and there's a, a basin for washing up simple but very practical facilities there's the shower a little sink and uh, yeah it's simple but it's basically all you need and they're all so nicely situated remind you very much or at least remind me very much of a kind of mozambican beach which is a bit odd because we're so far away from mozambican coastline but anyway uh, it's the kind of sandy underfeel and these simple thatched structures. Absolutely beautiful. One thing you do need to know about this park is that getting around is very hard and you absolutely have to have a 4x4, preferably two vehicles. There's a lot of deep sand here. Make sure you're fully equipped with recovery equipment. Whenever you go out, you are prepared in case you do get stuck because nobody's going to come and find you anytime soon. So make sure you've got water, make sure you've got food, make sure you've got recovery equipment. And just take your time. Don't rush this park. This is a big, big, big area. Make sure you've got plenty of time to see it all. So that's it, guys. My very quick overview of Liwa Plains National Park. I'm so thrilled to be here. I've wanted to come here for years, and it's the first time I managed it. Haven't seen barely another tourist here or another visitor. It's been amazing. I highly recommend it. You can either access it from the east coming from Lusaka or from the south from Sesheke coming through Mongo. 
across the Zambezi River and then you get to this magnificent plain. Well, well worth it. All right, guys, hope you've enjoyed that. If you have plenty more on my YouTube channel and Facebook, Instagram, just check out African Plant Hunter or Into the Wild Zimbabwe. You'll find me there. And if you would like to support me, you can do through my Patreon channel, patreon.com forward slash African Plant Hunter. I'm off to shoot some videos of some of these other remarkable plants. I will catch you later. Take it easy.